community. And today he will talk about his perspective on the problem and the solutions. So please, Eduardo. I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak at this workshop, especially for the privilege to speak after Professor Gross. It's interesting. It's a very happy coincidence that the, the first talk was about quark of quarks and their interactions. And the second talk is about superconductivity. I once made a, a survey about what was the most beautiful phenomena in physics. And there was a, a tie between quarks and their interactions and superconductivity. Also, if you count the number of Nobel Prizes awarded to the two subjects, it's a, basically a technical draw. So I would like to, I, I'm, nature is so uh, bountiful that it gives us two mechanisms, at least two mechanisms, two different mechanisms for superconductivity. So let's, so this is the summary of my talk. Uh, I was described as publications, and then the theory and results. The problem of high TC superconductivity is certainly one of the most important problems in physics. And it has challenged the, the theorists for almost 40 years now without a solution. So these are our publications on the subject. We have these five papers. Note this first one has 10,150 reads in three years, which gives an average of three, 10 reads a day. Interestingly, it has very low number of citations. It's very, I, I don't know exactly what this means. You go into the, this journal, we go to the first page and it indicates the number of reads. It actualizes every day. So superconductivity was discovered in, in the same year when Rutherford discovered the atomic nucleus, as beautifully described by Gross. Uh, Kamerlin Ones in Leiden, Holland, discovered that mercury below 4.15 Kelvin would propagate without resistance. This was a, a fantastic discovery, which also led to a Nobel Prize. And only 39 years later, the first theory describing the phenomena appeared, which is a phenomenological theory. Landau-Ginsburg theory, which is a, a theory this, which introduces a complex order parameter, the field phi, and quadratic and quartic terms. And the, the mechanism it proposes for leading so we, it presents a mechanism that allows the expectation value of this field to become different from zero. So, in 1957, so 30, 46 years after the discovery of superconductivity, these people develop a theory which would describe the microscopic theory behind the 
Landau Ginsburg theory. This is the famous BCS theory of Bardeen, Cooper, and Schiffer. But look here, it took 46 years after the discovery of superconductivity to have a full theory. But remember that in the meantime, the whole quantum mechanics had to be invented. So if now, nowadays, so, okay, this, let's move there. So in 1986, Bednos and Miller obtained for the first time superconductivity above 30 Kelvin. The highest temperature we had before was 23.2. And these materials were very sophisticated in complex materials, which were insulating and after replacing a fraction of the lanthanum atoms by barium would become superconducting at 39 Kelvin. So this is 37 years ago. And so far, there is no theory that de describes the mechanism. And we know for sure that it's not the old me BCS mechanism. We know that it's a, a, a new mechanism. So this is a list of different assorted cuprates. You have this lanthanum strontium, YBCO, bismuth family, mercury family, and thallium family. With this maximum superconducting series. But there is a common feature among all these materials which is the presence of these copper oxide planes, which are formed by these intertwined square lattices with copper ions. Uh, I'll focus on this. So these copper oxide planes have a very peculiar distribution, like this. This is one copper oxide plane, this is the material, this is the mercury family. Three, four, five copper oxide planes. So it, there, there, there is clear experimental evidence that the, phys the main physics underlying this high TC superconducting, superconducting, superconducting cuprates occurs in these copper oxide planes. So this copper oxide planes is the stage on which the drama unfolds. So the, there is by now a vast number of technological applications of these materials. This is just a, a sample. This are cables based on this high TC superconductor. And of course, they must be uh, refrigerated. So they pump liquid nitrogen through one of these channels and it comes out here, here. And these are a, 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 a list of cities which have already replaced their cable, electric cables, by this type of cable. Since 2000, you see in the United States, Germany, Japan, South Korea, China, Russia. So there is already vast technological use of these materials. So this is the phase diagram of this cuprates. I, I say that this is a playground for physicists because it has such a rich structure of it. This is temperature and this is the doping parameter. So you have antiferromagnetic in the L phase, spin glass, superconductivity, strange metal, Fermi liquid, 
pseudo gap charge order. So it's really so it's useless to say that after 37 years, there is no theory that so far that was able to describe even one of these of these lines separating these phases in, in this diagram. So I'm just going to advance what I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to obtain. With our model, we obtain an analytical expression for this line, this line, this line, this line, this line, and this line, which are exactly in agreement with the experimental measurement. I'll show that. So this is the theory. We have the, the stage where the, the, in the actors. This is the stage, is a, this black dots are copper ions, the red and cyan are P oxygen orbitals, Px and Py. So you see there is a, there are two uh, square lattices. in such a way that for each member of, let's call this A and B lattice, for each member of one lattice, oxygen, there are four nearest neighbors. And nearby is the copper oxide. So the actors are the localized spins of this, because these copper ions have spin a half, localized spin a half. And as we dope the system, we introduce holes in these oxygen orbitals, P orbitals, either Px or Py. And by the way, these are the expression for the spins of the holes in the A and B sublattices. It's a bipartite square length. Okay, so there are two possibilities for this bipartite oxygen lattice. You see, I, I depicted here in red and in green. Because this P oxygen, P orbitals, they have two lobes, and one has a positive sign and another negative. And there are two possibilities. You see here I have minus plus, minus plus, minus plus, minus, minus plus, minus plus. And here alternate. Plus, minus, minus plus, plus, minus, minus plus. So these two configurations that in principle would be uh, degenerate. I will show that this red one is the one that is realized in the superconducting phase. And it is also realized in the spin glass phase. So, and it's a kind of a dimerization, you see, because this is the base which is repeated in this square lattice, and here there is a dimerization. Something similar to what happens in polyacetylene, where the pyrrole mechanism produces a dimerization. And we will see that this is crucial for this orbital sign organization, is crucial for our results. So, in this red arrangement, we have this copper ion associated with one p orbital from the a sub lattice and other for the b sub lattice. And you see that 
this overlap of orbitals here is minus for one and plus for the other. So we'll see how this will. So the mechanism of doping, we have this origins, take this LSCO, you start from the parent substance material, which is lanthanum 2, copper oxide -fa. Now, lanthanum is C 6s2, and strontium is 5s2. But if you replace lanthanum by, by strontium 2 plus, strontium 2 plus have is lacking two electrons. So what happens is that it pulls these two electrons from those oxygen orbitals, creating holes. And that's how the holes are introduced in the copper oxide plane. OK. This is just uh, an example. So the number of electrons is 4 minus 4. So we have two lanthanum, each one pulling two electrons is 4. And y is the a number between 0 and 1. Now, y represents the number of holes that go into the copper oxide planes. And x is the stoichiometric number that my, my, comes from my, the, the chemi, chemical properties of my material. And in principle, this y is a function of x, but usually this is not known. For LSEO, we know that experimentally that y is equal to x. So for LSEO, all the doped, for each doped atom, we pull the same one electron from the oxygen. So let me describe the model we use. We use nothing, nothing fancy, nothing sophisticated. We have described this using plain Portuguese as feijão com arroz. But this uh, feijão com arroz bem temperado. <laughs> well seasoned black beans and rice. So the, the genealogy of our model is the following. The basic model describing this because we have three bands, because we have one D el electron. Sorry. Oops. We have one D electron, and you have two P electrons. So we, we have three electrons. So the three bands Hubbard model describes the hopping, the all possible hoppings of these electrons, and the, the Coulomb repulsion among them. But this is a rather com complicated model. So this is the first generation. The second generation, it's an uh, effective model which describes the, local, the localized copper spins by this S, la, capital S, the itinerant holes, which are whose spin is given by this. So there is a, a condo like magnetic interaction between the magnetic moment of the localized spins and the itinerant holes. A Heisenberg like magnetic interaction, and a hopping term. Psi would be the, the host. But this is the second generation. The third generation, we, we add 
a Hubbard repulsion interaction between the holes on site repulsion in the two sublasses, the A and B. So this would be the spin fermion Hubbard model. But this is not yet the model we use. The model we use derives from this spin fermion Hubbard model by the following operations. First, second, okay, one A, one B, and two. One is tracing the localized copper spin. So we trace this capital S here. And this trace is a, we can use a continuum description in which the spin of the localized spin is given by two fields, which is described respectively the antiferromagnetic and ferromagnetic fluctuation. So the trace reduces to calculating these two functional integrals. And second, we do these two terms here don't have any uh, localized spin. So what we do here, because this UP is larger than T, we do second order perturbation theory in, the, in T. So this is again a view. So the partition function is the trace of this exponential, these two terms. And this expression contained in the brackets involves the two terms with localized spins. In order to calculate this trace, we use this spin coherent base where the expectation value of the localized spin is given by Ni, where Ni is a unit classic vector. And this Ni decomposes in an antiferromagnetic and a ferromagnetic compound. In such a way that the trace is given by these two functional integrals. So just to summarize, this is the complete partition function. Integral is a quadratic one. You have a quadratic and a linear term. If we integrate in L, we will be taking one Hamiltonian H1. If we do second order perturbation theory here, we will obtain a second Hamiltonian H2. And finally, if I take this term here, which is the magnetic interaction between the itinerant spins and the localized antiferromagnetic component, we get a stochastic system with coupling, Heisenberg line, with couplings given by this, with these such probabilities. So let's see more closely what are the situation here. What is the situation? So we have these units here, this unit which has this copper ion and the oxygen ion, with this special plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus. So in this way, we see that each copper has two, I mean, has one, Px and one Py spin associate. And the sign, if you see the overlap of this, this is minus, this is minus, this is plus, this is plus. 
So this means already that when I dope the holes, if the holes go to sublattice A on B or B, it is implies a different sign for the magnetic interaction. This produces the frustration. And okay, th these are the probabilities. So this again, so the partition function has sure. Yeah, that's why it's perturbation theory, second order perturbation theory. The, 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 the what? The sign of the, of the, of the sutras changes or actually doesn't change. It's T squared. You mean, uh, okay, but this is the hopping. Yeah. If you take this interaction here, Okay, this, you see, is, you mean this, because it's quadratic, this sign will disappear, but there is this sign that comes from these phases here, because of the overlap of the, okay, because it's not, the, T, the, the, the second order perturbation theory in T0 doesn't affect the magnetic interaction. It will have an impact in the pseudo gap. So, the partition function has a magnetic component and an electric component. The magnetic component is a Heisenberg-like interaction between the antiferromagnetic components of the localized spin with coupling which is has these three values, possible values, with these probabilities. And this gives this average and variance. So this is the magnetic part of it. Now, the electronic part contains this, the hopping, the H1 and the H2. The H1, you see, is a uh, superconducting like interaction. It produces, provided, uh, it provides a, a attractive interaction between these holes, provided this product is negative. So that's why the rearra rearrangement of the lobes of the oxygen. P orbitals is fundamental here. This is the second order perturbation theory in, in the hopping. And it gives, it comes with a negative sign and it produces a formation of an exciton. It produces a bound state between a hole and an electron. So excitons, these are, Spin one axons observe because the two spins are parallel. So this is one of the predictions of our model that axons should be important. Now this combination here we can show that it's always minus. You can see here. You take for example this. These nearest neighbors uh, is a pair, one from one lattice A and the other B, yellow and red. 
So if you take yellow and red, you see the the four phases. This is minus, minus, plus, minus is negative. Plus, minus, plus, plus is negative. So with this arrangement, this combination is always negative. So consequently, this term here is also negative, and this means Cooper pairs will form between neighbors of opposite spin, each member belonging to a different subnet. So this provides the superconducting interaction. So the ground state, superconducting ground state, is a sum over all combinations of dimers in which we have this, this is a Cooper pair. So this is similar to the famous RVB state, which was proposed by Anderson a long time ago. But the Anderson proposal, the RVB, was a ground state of the Heisenberg antiferromagnet. And it was the diamonds were pairs of spins of antiparallel spins. Here the diamonds are Cooper pair. So this is a difference. This, this is our vacuum. This is for a situation in which. Yeah. So now we start to see, you observe that the coupling, the coupling parameter of the superconducting system is this number here. And the coupling of the pseudo gap is this. Now, if we go, if you take LSEO and use the measured values of these two couplings and plug it in here, we get this value. Now, if you look at the measured, you can determine the measured value of this coupling. You see? And here we have this. So this is the first indication that we were in the right track. Excuse me? You mean the first one or the second? OK, the, the first one comes from the spin fermion model when we make the transition from the three bands Hubbard model to the spin fermion, we determine the, the effective couplings of the spin fermion model in terms of the original three bands Hubbard parameters. So this, these are not really measured. These are calculated for when you make the transition from the spin fermion to, to the three bands Hubbard model to the spin fermion. What? Okay. This. This, there is no experimental entry here. This, they, they obtain these parameters of the spin fermion model from the three bands Hubbard model. Then, there in the three bands Hubbard model, there might be experimental, is the, the Coulomb repulsion between the, the original part. But this you, we determine when we make the transition to the T 
She bends her model to the spin fairy. GS is the coupling for the superconducting term. But where do you get the value from? Oh, you mean this one? Yeah. I'll show. I'll show it, please. So we have a hopping term and two quartic terms. No, it comes from the spin family model, which is a derivation that Zanin and collaborations made starting from the three bands Huber model. This comes from here. When I do these traces, I obtain this and this. This I call GS. And I, this I call GP. Okay. I'll show how to, I get experiment. So here we use Hubbard Satonovich method to write this as a trilinear, trilinear term, where phi is a Hubbard Satonovich field. So I do this for both and obtain the, the, the equation for the phi and chi field are this one. So the expectation value is the expectation value of a pa, pa Cooper pair. So this is an order parameter for superconductivity. And this M, which is the expectation value, is going to be a order parameter for the pseudo gap. I'll show that. And we can show very clearly that both cannot be different from zero at the same time. So there is a competition between pseudo gap and superconductivity. So with this arrangement, we see that the system is anti-symmetric by a 90 degree rotation. You, you fix this point, you, cho you change the red lattice 90 degrees, you see it changes sign. So for this, we, we have the, the ground state expectation value as this symmetry here, which is called dx2 minus y2. So these are the expressions for the order parameters. And the description of doping is made by adding a uh, constraint. Like it's, it's equivalent to going to the grand canonical ensemble. And furthermore, we replace the Hubbard Satonovich fields and mu by the vacuum expectation values. So this is a mean field in the parameters, the, the, the order parameters. But there is a, we, are, we have been very careful. So this is just rewriting using the Nambu fermion field. I'll be saying this. So if I integrate over the fermions, I have this expression, with these uh, the eigenvalues. So this is my grand canonical potential. 
Now, in order to justify that mean field, we've been very careful about stability. You see that, for example, the first three derivatives must be zero, and the, the Hessian matrix of the second derivatives must have only positive eigenvalues. So we have been very careful and we show there is a, a general theorem in linear algebra that show that this matrix to have only positive eigenvalues is total is identical to it's a necessary and sufficient condition for the, all the minor principal determinants to be zero. This means this to be positive. This, this, and this. And this we show. So we are assured about stability. Okay, so. Let's go to the results. So I, I just repeated here the schematic phase diagram to refresh your memory. So first, the Fermi surface evolution. If I take the eigenvalues of this operator here, the Fermi surface is defined as the surface, the, the manifold for which this is zero. And this means this expression here. So you see that whenever we are in a superconducting phase, this is complex, there is no Fermi surface, which is we know is true in a superconducting phase. Now, if we go to the pseudo-gap region, we see that this equation here, the, the, I mean, this is zero. This, if I plug the epsilon and m here, epsilon and m, epsilon and m, we have minus and a plus, we show that this gives equation of ellipses. Oh, it's here. So it's plugging here. This is this. And this is the experimental result which was published in Nature in this year. So you see here two different methods laser arpes, and so you have this. Fermi surface. So now the pseudo gap. What is the pseudo gap? If you take the density of states, when you lower the temperature beyond, be under T star, the density of states is depleted near the Fermi surface, creating two peaks. And this is a that's why it's called a pseudo gap. So if we take that, that's the definition of density of states. W is the dispersion relation. If we use uh, the result of the energy for a tight binding system, we have just this. Now, if we if we add the pseudo gap, we obtain this function, which has this form here. You see the two peaks, and the the line is our theoretical expression, and the dots are the experimental value. So the superconducting and 
pseudo gap diagram. When you use those stationary conditions that derivatives should be zero with respect to delta and mu, we obtain this expression here for the TC. It's a function of the chemical potential and the temperature. Now, notice that this denominator is a monotonically increasing function of the chemical potential. So T max, the maximum temperature, so this is the dome. The dome appears here because you see that when this mu is zero, the co hyperbolic cosine is one and logarithm is zero. So we have this value for the T maximum in terms of the, the GS and then the number of planes. Now, for the chemical potential, we must write the chemical potential in terms of the stoichiometric doping parameter, which I don't know. In LSEO, I know it's one. But the chemical potential, so what we do, we, we realize that at maximal doping, this must be zero because that's how, because this is a monotonically increasing function. So when it's zero, T is maximum. So we force the chemical potential to vanish at x equal x zero. And this gamma is something that conveys our ignorance between the the relation between the stoichiometric doping parameter and the the number of holes that goes effectively into the plane. So this gamma is the only adjustable parameter we have. We are going to so in this eta here is this function where G C is a is a threshold coupling. This lambda is basically the momentum associated to the correlation correlation parameter. Okay. So the, now if you compare this maximum temperature, if you compare this with the BCS result, you see, you have this BCS, and this is our result. So we have a energy momentum scale. We have there the, the by energy. We have the zeta function, which is depicted here. We have this exponential function, which is depicted here. And this zeta is given by this. You see that if we expand this in the strong coupling, it, has, it gives exactly the same result. So it's very suggestive that we obtain this expression for it. Now, if we use the minimal condition with respect to m and mu, we get this, which is the pseudo gap, and we, we have a similar answer for the chemical potential along the pseudo gap. Okay, now we plot this to find t as a function of l. Note that this is an implicit result, and also here. This is an implicit relation. So if we plot this, adjusting just the gamma, you see, this is for LSEO, this is for IBCO, this is the superconducting dome, and this is pseudo. These lines are 
obtained from the previous expressions for T C and T star. These are the experimental. Aqui, the Mercury family. So there's no no theory so far have has even intended to describe this this curve. This is amplified. So you see the, the accuracy of this. Just, just gamma is just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I, just, I enter the value of t plus, t maximum, which is this and x zero. But these are not adjusted. They are, they are fixed. I cannot. But gamma I adjust. So there is only one parameter adjusted here. So this is quite impressive. Now we go to the magnetic sector, antiferromagnetic and spin glass. So the, the nail temperature turns out to be given by this expression, where rho x is given by this. I, 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 I'll be a quick. You see? This, that, there's no adjustment of parameters here. The only we enter is the value of this, and we enter the value of the spin stiffness. This is the sublattice magnetization, which is the square root. Now the spin glass. If I take a Heisenberg quantum antiferromagnetic spin glass with these three possibilities of coupling constant with these probabilities where X is the doping parameter, I get this variance and this average. So I had studied largely this spin glass in these three papers. Uh, this gamma has nothing to do with the previous. This was a gamma that I used in this spin glass. So I find this equation for the temperature separating the spin glass phase from the paramagnetic phase. So I plot. So this black line is obtained from this equation without adjusting any parameter. Here, different scale is the same curve. It's always the same curve. Now, the dependence of temperature on the number of planes. I take this expression for T maximal and consider a single family, namely bismuth or thallium or mercury, and assume that that GS, that coupling is the same for all members of the family. Then the, 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 different, the maximum temperature for each family is given by this ratio. So, if I go there, I see T maximum, the my theoretical value and the experimental value. So, this explains the increase of the temperature according to the number of planes of the family. Now, temp, uh, pressure effects. So I have this expression for maximum temperature. This eta is that function, and this, I, if I want to see the effect on Tc, I 
place, yes, here. And if I want to see the effect on the pseudo gap, I plug this in there. So this exchange integrals and Hubbard parameter are given by these integrals at this. There are four atomic wave functions. And the hopping parameter has two. Now, since this is t squared over u, this is going to be 2 squared over 4, which is 1. So no effect on the t, t star. This is a prediction of our model. But in GS, you have 4 squared over 4. So it will change. So we have the compressibility, but the compressibility of the exchange integrals is given by this. This is the solution of the differential equation. Since GS is a, a ratio between this expression, it must it be itself has this form. And here I have just one parameter which I must adjust which is this compressibility. So, conclusion, pseudo gap does not depend on pressure. And TC, look at the result. For X corresponding to the optimal dope. And these are the adjusted parameters. This is a same result for this different material. Okay, now... Uh, what? Five to 10 minutes. Okay, five minutes. Five minutes. So we, we just use Kubo's formula with this expression. We obtain the, the current correlator from the gram partition function, which is the resistivity is just obtained by inverting the Kubo's result. And omega is given by this. So I play this in here. So thereby I can show that in any phase the resistivity has this expression here, where G is this function, K1 and K2 are given. Where and B is given by this. So this is the value of each of these functions in the different phases, pseudo gap. Strange metal and family liquid. And if you plug this in the resistivity, we have these expressions here. Now, in strange metal, we have this expression for G which leads very naturally to the linear dependent re resistivity without having to do any fancy assumptions about Planck times and so, so, such things by like that. And we predict that the slope is proportional to the pseudo-gap temperature. You see here is a plot of the slope A1 divided by BC0 is load. slope divided by BC, which is proportional to T star. So you see here the red dots are slope divided by BC, 
this is our special for the pseudo gap and the the the, the blue squares and the experimental is the black dot. Okay. Fermi liquid phase. This is one of the most spectacular results. Fermi liquid phase, you have this G is, is equal to 1, so the resistivity is Bt2, which is the correct special for a Fermi liquid, where B is given by this, we calculate without adjusting anything. Now, a measurement of this by Hussey's group, which is Nigel Hussey, his colleague of Michael Berry in Bristol, they obtain this, oh, notice that this resistive versus T square. So this slope gives this. And this is our theoretical result without adjusting anything. No, this this is for LSEO. Uh, look, okay, good point. Only for LSEO, I have K one G of K one equals zero, K two equals zero. I mean. Only LSEO, I will ha I'll have K2 equals zero. Okay, I have Fermi liquid. Fermi liquid is K1 equals zero, K2. This is only for LSEO. This is valid only for LSU. And this is the, the crossover we see. We obtain B to this power, where B is here. And this is the result of Nigel Hussey. without adjusting anything. These are our theoretical results. The, the solid line, I mean, the, the, is the dashed line. The solid line, solid line, and the circles are the experimental results. This is all for LSEO. Again, you see resistivity of LSEO versus temperature at zero magnetic field for this TC. So you see that that phase diagram is coming alive because now we have analytical expressions for all of these curves. Now, uh, finally, applied magnetic field. We introduce this A, and we have a similar expression. Now we have three scaling variables. And then we have the distortion of the superconducting gap as we go from zero Tesla here, 30 Tesla, 50 Tesla, and 80 Tesla. So you see that the gap is destroyed. The experimental data are from this paper. And this is a nice result also from Hussey group. Magneto resistivity. This is resistivity versus magnetic field. You see that we have very good. This is for bismuth 2201. 
Okay, so I come to the end. So far, no theory has been able to provide such an amount of correct explanations of the experimental data. So that's why I dare to say that this is a successful theory for ITC. Several key issues along this almost 40 years are solved, like, for example, the identification of the interaction responsible for superconductivity, analytic expressions for superconductivity and TC, analytic expressions for T star pseudo gap, pressure dependence, dependence on number of planes, resistivity in different phases, magnetic AF and spin glass, magnetic resistivity, <laughs> you name it. I, I didn't tell you how I got it. I, I, I didn't forget. I, I'm going to that. I thought it was there, but I read that. Predictions. Pseudo gap is a spin one axon condensate. Order parameter for pseudo gap is the distance between the two. Linear resistivity with slow proportional to this T star. These axons must be observed somehow. Because they are there, what happens is that axons have extremely short life because they annihilate. Absence of pressure effect. Now, let me respond to your point. Why, how I obtain that experiment on that? It's here. I, Oh, yeah. I think T max. Here. I take T max. I enter the value of T max, like for example here. Lambda I know, and eta is this function. I know GC. So I enter the value of G. I enter T max, I obtain the value of G. G is yes, for, because it's T max. Okay, that's how I got that second number. So, uh, I'm coming to the end. Okay, so this is the Phase I am no longer a schematic, it's, it's, it's real. And the perspectives, complete description of the family self evolution, description of charge ordered phase, but this I, I'll show that I already did. Specific heat, transport, heat transport. These are just this is not published. So this is uh, the charge order phase. I will be saying exactly. You see, well, so these are in good agreement. So this is the phase diagram. This is the spin glass phase. This is the charge order phase. So that playground we we are able to use in full extent. So I 
conclude saying that we have enough reasons to assert we have a successful theory for describing high TC superconductivity in complex. This is my collaborators, especially in the first paper, Rodrigo Aroca, former PhD student, Lizardo, it's a former postdoc, Reginald, a former PhD student, and Van is a professor at Belém do Pará. So, thank you to the funding agencies. And I take the liberty to make this advertisement of my book on quantum field theory and condensed matter. Thank you for your attention. Very interesting results, and I think there'll be more reads for the paper, at least. Uh, are there any questions? I think we don't have really time for many questions, so let's ask uh, basic questions. Kari. One basic question is, you have a lambda parameter, which is 0.0 in electron volts. This lambda parameter, just remind me, how does it come into the quality? Uh, it's AC over uh, Xi, uh, Xi is the superconducting correlation length. No, but this is the, the size of the Cooper pair, which in high TCs is 10, 10 less space. Okay, but if you compute the the well, this is not obvious because you must really compute the correlation length by making the scalar products of these states. I, this size the experimental that this this correlation length is the experimental value. It's about ten less size. I have, look, I have a, 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 an interaction, a, a pair forming interaction that is between neighbor, between me, members of the one, of one lattice and the next one. So I, I would have to make diamonds of next near neighbors. Of course, this in principle, can be done. No, that, that I didn't calculate anything with that. That is just uh, the the most important contribution. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the question is, I hope we missed it, that for every phase, you do different mean field scheme with all the real one. Okay. I'll do, for example, good point. Okay. If I do, if I'm going to describe the TC transition, the superconducting transition, I do mean field making the derivatives equal to zero the derivative with respect to delta and mu. If from this I obtain this. So, 
So there's one, uh, I think, uh, grand canonical potential for the whole thing. Or... Yeah, exactly. But okay. So if I if I do the variation with, with respect to delta and mu, I get this line. If I do the variation with respect to m, the super the pseudo gap. Or and mu, I obtain this line. So, and the spin glass, I take the. My remember the the, the partition function is a factor of um, electronic and magnetic. For the spin glass phase, I take. I do the variation with respect to the, the of the magnetic partition function with respect to 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 the magnetization and I obtain the now I sure for the magnetic part. I think here for the magnetic part I you see there's a magnetic and electronic. I vary with respect to n. Because the, the Z magnetic depends on N. And then that's how I get the nail and uh, spin glass. So I, I never saw a theory for high TC that describes both the spin glass and superconducting phase in the same. Okay, I think we really don't have time for further discussion. So let's let's thank Eduardo again. Thank you. And, uh, I suggest that uh, the discussion continues on the bus, and tomorrow the bus will depart at eight thirty. So not not at eight, but eight thirty. So it's a bit later. So you'll have more time in the morning. <laughs>